This is part two in a series on how to protect yourself from ransomware and online criminals. Much of the focus on this presentation will be on Windows 10 platform, but there will be techniques and ideas that will help any individual working online, whether they use Windows platform or not. Hi, I'm Lowell Vanderpool. I'm a technology enthusiast. I help people with technology. This video is not sponsored by any company or product or any financial support from any of the products that I need. You can always contact me at my email below. Just a note to everyone, when we're talking about online security, it is important to understand this, that a skilled and determined hacker can probably penetrate just about any defense and level of security you can implement. Our goal is to make your online presence as secure as reasonably possible. If I have your standard American front door, a 300 pound burglar can probably come up and kick the door in. But if I put this stainless steel door in with three points of locking, it's going to require a bulldozer to get through my front door. It's not that it's impossible, but I'm making it a whole lot harder. Let's start by ramping up your security. We're going to talk about two-factor authentication. The reason for two-factor authentication is that it's far easier to steal your password than you think. If you use the same password on more than one site, if you download software from the internet, if you click on links and email messages, you are at higher risk to get your password stolen. Two-step verification can help keep the bad guys out, even if they have your password. Most security conscious websites and online businesses are encouraging you to move to two-factor for that very reason. Here is Google's webpage on their two-step two verification Two-factor authentication requires you to have more than just your username and password because stealing passwords is not a difficult thing to do for online criminals. Adding two-factor requires more than just your username and password. So here's an example of two-factor. I go to the website that I use and I log on with my username and password. The website prompts or sends a code to my phone. I have to have this phone and then with the code on my phone, I punch it in as a second layer of security into the website and then I can log in. So if a criminal, online criminal, has my password, they cannot get onto the site. They don't have my phone and they don't have this code so they can't get in. Enabling two-factor authentication or 2FA is one of the simplest and most important security measures you can take to secure your online accounts. This online site is linked to my sl uh, PowerPoint slide here on the video. You can go here and you can find out what companies, what institutions support two-factor. So if I'm banking, I can click on the banking and I can scroll down. So here I can scroll up and look at the different credit unions, banks, credit card companies to see do they support two-factor and how do they support it. Some use email, some use SMS messages to your phone, some of them use hardware tokens, but all of them add more security. So for example, email is very important to, to lock down and protect. So if I want to see if the email provider that I'm using, I can use this and scroll up and take a look to see is if the provider for my email it supports two-factor or not. Remember, any web institution that you use for online commerce, trading, whatever, that does not provide two-factor puts you at risk. Although any two type of two-factor authentication is better than none, there are better two-factor authentication methods. One is using the Google Authenticator app, the Microsoft Authenticator app, or the LastPass Authenticator app or apps like Symantec VIP app. These are much more secure than just a text message to your phone. If you're using the Google ecosystem, Gmail, any of the Google products, and you're having to log on, I would definitely encourage you to get the Google Authenticator. This allows you to factor and it is more secure than other methods. This is the LastPass Authenticator. 
This is another good two-factor authentication app that you can put on your phone. It supports iOS and Android. These give you very secure two-factor. Microsoft also has their own Microsoft Authenticator app for two-factor. What's really nice about the, the listed Authenticator apps that I've just mentioned is many other companies support these apps. So you can use them for more than one entity or institution online. You say, well, Mr. Vanderpool, what happens when I can't, my cell phone can't connect to my mobile cell tower, cell service? Will I be able to authenticate to a site? Well, most of them do allow you to authenticate even when not connected to a mobile phone service. One of the more exciting things that have happened recently has been the FIDO Alliance. They are providing technology to provide greater security for working online. The FIDO Alliance is allowing websites and users to use sophisticated cryptology so that we can safely do business online. So what is a FIDO2 key? FIDO2 cryptographic login credentials are unique to each website that supports FIDO2. You have to have somebody that you're using online that supports the FIDO2 protocol. So Gmail does, Google's ecosystem supports it. Many of the banks are now supporting FIDO2. Your crypto logins are never stored on any server. So if they attack a server-based system, they can't get your credentials. You can't steal this password. It's on the key and it's cryptologically secure. There's no phishing attacks that work against it and no password replay attacks that work against the website and your credentials. Another benefit of FIDO2 keys, you get another layer of privacy. Each key is unique for each website that supports the FIDO2 protocol. It cannot be tracked across sites. Data never leaves that USB key. They're inexpensive to purchase. I recommend if you do do this, buy two, one for a backup. These are not expensive. This is very affordable and you can see they come in different shapes, different sizes, and different price points. If you are comfortable with the Microsoft ecosystem, you use Microsoft Outlook, you use Office 365, then you would want to look at the Yubico FIDO keys. They come in all shapes and sizes, as you can see. This is very inexpensive security. Do you use Gmail? You need to lock it down with two-factor authentication, and what would be better is use a FIDO2 USB key. This year, Google analyzed a lot of its compromised Gmail sites. Over 788,000 login Gmail credentials were stolen via keyloggers. 12 million were stolen via phishing. 3.3 billion Gmail accounts were exposed by third-party data breaches. Now, from this point on, I'm going to focus on the Windows 10 environment. So I'm going to be focusing on PCs and laptops and tablets that are in Windows 10. Let's secure your hardware. Two important hardware elements on your laptop and your PC that will really improve the hardware security of your platform is Secure Boot and Trusted Platform Module, or TPM. You need to find out, are they enabled, and, are they, and, and if they're not, turn them on. Let me show you some steps that will help you figure out how to turn on Secure Boot or the trusted platform module on your laptop or PC, no matter what type of hardware you have. So I'm gonna to go to Google search, and the first thing you need to know is the model of your laptop or PC. Who makes it, and what is a model? So in this example, I'm just gonna say, let's say I purchased an HP Elite Desk 705. That's what I have in my office, or that's what I have at my house. I'm going to put that in Google search, and I'm going to put in here, enable, it would help if I spell it right, secure boot. And I'm just going to use Google search. And immediately I get a results on what I need to do step by step, how to turn on secure boot for HP. So you can do this, I, this process for your Acer laptop, your Lenovo, for whatever you have, almost any hardware manufacturer has a step-by-step -step on how to turn on secure boot and how to enable the trusted platform module 
if you'll just look it up and follow the instructions. Once you have turned on Secure Boot and the Trusted Platform module, Windows will actually recognize those hardware features on. So let's take our mouse and we'll go to our Action Center icon, which is at the bottom right. We're going to click on that. We're going to go to All Settings and we're going to look at Update and Security. I'm then going to go over to the Windows Security and then Device Security in the Windows Security section. And here you can see it recognizes that I've got my Trusted Platform module on. It also recognizes that Secure Boot is turned on in the UEFI BIOS. So this information shown in Security Center will confirm that these hardware elements are on. Windows 10 has many more in-depth security features. Let's dive in and take a look. Windows 10 now has a new virtualization layer that now protects your credentials and the PC workstation's credentials from any kernel-based attack. So even if the kernel is compromised, they cannot get your credentials. This new virtualized-based security is called Windows 10 Core Isolation Feature and Windows 10 Memory Integrity feature. If you meet the hardware requirements, you can turn those on and make them active on your system. Let's take a look at this feature on our Windows box. So I'm going to take my mouse, go to the Action Center, bottom right, click, go to All Settings, go right back to Update and Security, and I'm going to go back to Windows Security, and I'm going to go to Device Security in the Windows Security section. And you will see the core isolation. This informs me that virtualization-based security is now protecting my credentials. It also has memory integrity on, and these are extremely important in protecting your Windows operating system. You can see embedded in the slide is a web link that takes you to Microsoft's documents on hardware requirements for these features. You can check to see if you meet those requirements. Windows is adding a new hypervisor that creates this virtual secure mode. It enforces restrictions to vital system and operating system resources. It protects security assets such as authenticated user credentials. With the increased protection offered, even if malware gains access to the operating system kernel, the possible exploits can be greatly limited and contained. Windows 10 now offers many new account protection features. Microsoft is now making it possible to live without passwords. With Windows Hello and Windows 10, you can now work with biometrics, fingerprints, facial recognition, FIDO2 security keys, the Hello Pin, Dynamic Lock. These are all great features to secure your desktop or your laptop. With just a little bit of extra hardware, Windows 10 can provide significant improvement in security of your laptop or desktop, especially from unauthorized access. So here is on Amazon. I just randomly went to look to find devices that will work with Windows 10. This is a fingerprint reader, $65, that you can add that unless your fingerprint is on that reader, no one's going to log on to that PC. Just a friendly reminder, I am showing you hardware devices, devices that you can purchase, but this is an educational lecture. There's no promotion of any product or financial gain is made by including in the lecture products or software. I do not provide reviews of any products. I may give my opinion on such items, but you still need to determine for yourself each and every purchase you make. Here's another inexpensive facial recognition piece of hardware that you can buy that works with Windows 10. It includes a webcam. This just gives you ideas of what you can do and the cost of adding greater levels of security. Notice that the title of my entire video series was focused around ransomware. Well, here we are finally talking about some of the protection built into the latest version of Windows 10 that actually gives you ransomware protection. Microsoft has finally added some features and functionality that help the common user to be able to implement really secure ways of protecting against ransomware. Are you a small business office? Do you run a business out of your home? Ransomware is a real threat to your financial help. It is not uncommon to find healthy businesses go completely out of business due to a ransomware attack. Ransomware begins by you unknowingly downloading malware, 
ransomware attacks these particular folders, your desktop, your music folders, your download folders, your videos, your documents, and your pictures. These are typically where you put your most important documents. Windows 10 now has a ransomware protection feature that allows you to control what applications have access to those important folders. Let me demonstrate this ransomware feature. So here on my desktop, I'm gonna open up my folders. And these are the most common folders that you put your vital information in. You may use other folders also. So if I wanna turn on ran ransomware protection, I do this. I go to my Action Center, which is on your bottom right-hand side. And I go to Settings. And we're gonna to go to Update and Security. And I'm going to go to Windows Security and I'm going to choose Virus Threat Protection and I'm going to open that up and I'm going to slide it down and here it says I need to turn this tamper protection on so I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you'll notice this dialog box that has popped up on the screen, this is called the User Account Control dialog box. This is very, very important. It is telling you that something is about to change your operating system. If you ever see this while you're opening up email or working with email or you're online surfing the internet, do not say yes. Something is maliciously trying to change your system. Now here, I'm actually deliberately trying to change something. So this is appropriate. So in this case, I'm going to say yes. So let's scroll down and let's manage ransomware protection. We're going to click on this. And, I, and it's going to allow me to set up controlled folder access. This allows me to protect files and folders and memory areas on my device from unauthorized changes by unfriendly applications. And in this case, this would be ransomware. So I'm going to turn this on and notice my dialog box says something is going to make a change to your operating system. Well, I know what I'm I know that I am trying to do that. So in this case, yes. So we can see below, we can see we can control what folders are protected. We can also allow an app to or not to be able to access the folders that we choose to protect. So I'm going to start with protecting the folders. And again, there's our dialog box. We're going to say yes. And you can see that it, Microsoft has already protected your document folder, your pictures folders, your videos, your music, your desktop. These things are already set up as protected. So you can add an additional protected folder if you have a folder on a second drive or somewhere else you want to add to this list. You can do that right through here. Let's go back. And I'm gonna to go to virus and protection and I wanna scroll down to ransomware, manage ransomware. Here, let's take a look at allowing apps. What app can get to these folders? Now, by default, all the installed Windows apps already are allowed to access your folders. What we don't want is ransomware or some malware to access your folders. So here, we, if we have an additional application, we can again allow an additional application. So let me show you an example of this. So right now you can see these folders are protected by the ransomware protection in Windows 10. But what if I add another application and I need to give it access to these folders? So let's say I want to download and install Foxit Reader, which is a PDF reader, and then I want to give it free a some access to these folders. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. And you can see it's downloading and we'll go ahead and give it the opportunity to run. It's now being scanned to make sure it's a safe application. There it is. It's popping up. It wants to install. Now, if I was doing this and I didn't, this wasn't supposed to happen, I would never click yes. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. Now we have Foxit installed and you can see it's installed, but it does not have access to these folders. So I'm going to have to give it permission. So let's go back to Action Center, Settings, Security. We're going to go to Virus Protection, and we're going to go to Ransomware Protection. 
And I'm going to look at block history and I can see there has been some things blocked. Let me come back, go to allow an app through control folder. And so notice it's making me aware that as I am the only one who can allow applications to these folders. And I'm going to look at recently blocked apps. In this case, there's Foxit Reader. It was blocked to access those folders and I trust it. So I'm going to add it to my trusted list. Now and only now can Foxit access those folders. Most individuals are not aware when they download and install ransomware. And by the time they do realize it, their data is toast. So if you turn on this feature, it requires you to do a little intervention, but it does protect you from ransomware. Windows 10 is now adding additional application and browser control. Because social engineering is so effective against us when we're online or using email, Microsoft is building in protection to protect you from yourself. Let's take a look at this feature in Windows 10. We'll go to Action Center. We'll go to Settings. We'll go to Update and Security. And we will go to Windows Security. And we will go to Apps, App and Browser Control. These are features that you can turn on. You can leave them at the default settings. This provides you check apps and files using Windows Defender Smart Screen. If this is a PC for, say, someone who is elderly or less technically inclined, you may want to change these to blocked. So depending on the individual that is using this PC, you may or may want to move these to a higher level. This prevents them from accidentally getting malware and malicious code installed. Smart Screen for Edge, Smart Screen for Microsoft Store apps, and then we'll talk about exploit protection. This is additional features built in to protect yourself from attacks. For additional safety while browsing the internet, you can add a feature, a Windows feature called Application Guard and it will allow you to launch a totally virtualized edge session. So your browser is absolutely isolated from the rest of the operating system. Once you install the new Windows Defender Application Guard service, you will then see once you reboot, Edge will have a new option called New Application Guard Window, and it will allow you to launch an edge session totally virtualized. So on my Windows box, I'm going down to my search and I'm going to type in Windows Features. You can see in my Windows Features dialog box, if I scroll down, I can see the Windows Defender Application Guard service. Notice it's grayed out because my demo is on a virtual PC, so it doesn't allow me to turn it on. But a regular PC will allow you to turn this on and that service is enabled. So here I have a session of, of Edge running. And if I come over here, you can see that I now have a new application guard window. If I click it, it launches a totally new session of Edge. Notice my personal information is gone on this new browser. This is totally anonymous and it is totally virtualized from my operating system. Now I can surf very safe. Of all the security features that I have shared, one of the most effective security features you can have is a good backup. In Windows 7, Microsoft launched a new backup system. It was so popular and it is still used. Even with Windows 10, Microsoft has uh, continued to support and include, even in Windows 10, this Windows 7 backup system. Windows 7 Backup allows you to backup just the files that you want, or it, better yet, it allows you to completely recover your PC in what we call a bare metal recovery. So if you lose a hard drive or you lose a complete operating system, you can restart from scratch. An inexpensive external hard drive and Windows 7 Backup on your Windows 10 platform is a great way to secure your system. With Windows 7, you can schedule your backup of your folders on your PC 
and you can create a system image which allows you to do bare metal recovery. Launcher control panel, which is the old way we used to get to our administrative tools. And you go to file history. And here you'll have access to your Windows 7 backup and restore. And here I can create a system image on my USB hard drive and I can set up and schedule backups of my folders. I can set them up for one day a week, uh, what time. This is critical. To a special thanks to all these awesome people who made these resources for free. Thank <laughs> you.